right into seven-figure territory for her career. Great milestone for any tournament poker player. How early did you get that in your career, Jonathan? First year I played, I lost pretty much everything I touched. <laughs> then the second year I, I had I had an early score for like 320K, but then I had a million dollar score shortly after. There so you go. So it's second two year. years of live poker. But the first three years, I played literally every day of my life on party poker. Wow. Every single day. I took Full no circle. off days. Interesting spot here for Emma. She does have a quite a strong heads up hand, but not one you're necessarily crazy about. Um, you know, force facing a three bet. Certainly an argument to continue here. So this is a spot where if we were playing normal poker, where she raised the cutoff and let's say button three bet, you would definitely be folding the mm -hmm. king nine. But heads up, you just have to play more hands. And right here, you have to ask, do we have 33% equity? You do, right, a lot of the time. Or, and we're also yeah, in position. Oh, and she is four betting here. So she's using it as a bluff, which I think is also viable. I would be tempted to four bet slightly weaker hands, like maybe king eight, king seven, but, you know, king eight, king nine, certainly a fine way to do it. Well, if she doesn't want to call the king nine, it's effectively the same thing as the king eight, isn't it? Right. If you're Whatever the bottom of your folding range, or the bottom of your calling range slash top of your folding range, those are all pretty good hands to use as a bluff. Now, should Patrick stick around? I mean, I think there's a chance he would shove, to be honest. <laughs> he has to put in 2.2 .2 to win what is going to be 8 million. I don't think he's going to want to call. <laughs> pot odd, pot odds are I a fun could, thing. Heads I up. Could, I could see him shoving, to be honest. I think shoving would be a little bit maniacal. But hey, nothing wrong with being a little bit of a maniac. He does call. Nice. What do I know? I mean, really. Again, you have always have to look at what am I being offered? I do, mm -hmm. Am I going to realize 27% equity yeah. with 7-5 suited out of position? This I mean, it's tough, but yeah. you probably are. There are no payout implications anymore. They're just straight up playing a heads-up match for 300000 Canadian mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. So if it's plus EV, it's plus EV, and it probably just is. Wow. <laughs> this is the problem with calling the 7-5 suited, is that inevitably you make right, some junky pair, and it's pretty good. Notice here, Emma actually has a boatload of equity with just a nine of spades. The other card doesn't even matter, really. More than a boatload. She's a favorite, even though. Right. Serta is technically ahead right now with the seven. Sorry, check. She's going to check back here. Doesn't want to have to bet fold this flop, ha flopping all this equity. Heads up, check about. So interesting turn. If Emma bets the turn as a bluff, she probably needs to bet the Sorry, river, check. I would presume. It's always a tense spot because you know the pot's already huge. Lots of money could go in the pot. It, Emma has to be careful because if she m makes a huge bet, it may result in Patrick only calling when Emma is just crushed. But at the same time, you want him to fold pretty much anything, right? And I mean, Patrick is in a miserable spot. And you know, when you do call that preflop four bet, you realize you are going to underrealize your equity, meaning that preflop you had 38%. Oh my god. He decides to stick around. He can only beat stone bluffs. <laughs> Problem is, notice the stone bluff that Emma has has a whopping 39% equity. Jeez, this hand is nuts. Three. Oh my goodness. Brick City on the river. Does Emma go for it? This could be over right here if Emma goes for it and Patrick decides to be a hero. And I'll tell you, Patrick has hero called Emma once already, and he hero called me yesterday in a huge pot as well. So he is a hero caller, Sorry, if I've check. ever seen one. And, I mean, <laughs> we also know Emma loves to bluff. She has an ideal bluffing hand. I mean... It seems rather insane that this this would somehow be an all-in pot, but it really could be. 
will she go for it? Does this king high have any showdown value at all? And I think the answer is uh, it's close. Griffin, what's going to happen? I'm so nervous. It's hard because she's trying to figure out what hands he has that would call the turn and maybe fold river. What kind of 10? Yeah, she nice. does it. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> now, Patrick, the master hero caller. I think there's any world where he finds this call. I mean, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Remember, this was a four bet pre flop hand, right? Can I take it? Emma raised, Patrick three bet, Emma four bet. Oh my god, he's gonna think about it. I've only seen Patrick use time bank chips a few times, and every time he made the call. He's chatting her up a little bit. <laughs> He's talking himself into it. Oh, this would be a heck of a call. Could you imagine calling for 300000 Canadian dollars, the difference between first and second here, with pretty much the nut low? Time used. Oh my god. He oh did it! Oh my god! Wow. Just like that. Pair of sevens for all the money. And I think it's done! I think that was all the money. Patrick, Sarah, just like that. Wow. That is the way you win a WPT event, Emma. Wow. Goes down, guns blazing in second place. Big hug for the champion.